everyone, it's Mary. Welcome back to the channel. It's here. It's finally here. <laughs> so excited. Okay, this is the Sizzix Big Shot Switch Plus review. So I'm going to look, go through this, but I have to tell you when I was first introduced to this, okay? Um, right now I'm showing you on the box some of the things. It's an electrical die cutting machine, one touch reverse function, overload direction system. Um, it has storage and it will fit and work with all of your Sizzix bigs and thinlets and all the things. So that was the selling point for me. So it comes with two cutting plates. It comes with this um, Sizzix platform. This is sort of like a shim and also it'll give you great directions on how to do your sandwiching for your die cutting. So that's a great piece. And then it comes with the base plate. Now I have to tell you, in 2020, right before the pandemic in January, I went to Creativation out in Arizona. And I recall very specifically walking by the Sizzix booth and seeing the switch there. And I was enamored. I was like, yes, okay, finally, because I don't like the crank machines and I just really, really want to be able to use all my dies with one machine. So I was like, okay, this is great. This is the thing I'm going to get. And then here we are two years later. So we know it's been quite a wait for the Sizzix switch. So I was super excited about it. I've known about this for a long time. Um, I just feel like it's finally my all in one. So let's get it out and let's take a look at some of those things that it does. First of all, it comes wrapped in tons of plastic. Um, I thought it was, you know, wrapped really well, shipped really well. Um, it's a, it came in a box in a box. So that was good. So I'm getting all that done. Now the, the allure to me, like I said, it will fit all of my dies. So I no longer have to forego my bigs dies. I'll show that in a little bit. But I have quite a few and I really like them because you can cut very thick material, they're steel cut dies, and you can do uh, multiple cardstock pieces. Now, that comes with an instruction manual and I always wanna look over that. You're never too seasoned a crafter to take out your manual and look at it, at least peruse it a little bit so you can get an idea. Uh, you might be too excited to do that, <laughs> but you're never too seasoned. So I took it out because I just wanted to make sure um, that I was doing things right. And in fact, the instruction manual didn't have what I'm gonna show you here in a, in a little bit, just a couple extra techniques and things. Right here is the storage compartment on the bottom. And so you can put whatever you like in there that'll fit. But I just, for you know video purposes, I'm showing you, I'm putting in a pair of scissors and my Spellbinders tool. And um, I'm just going to, yeah, just kind of give you an idea, a visual of what could fit in there. Now let's look at these plates. So brilliant design, okay? Do you know when you put your plates into your die cutting machine, you get that, that bump right at the beginning? It's like a big thump bump because your plates are catching. Well, the way that they've designed these plates is the front of the plate is beveled. So what you do, and it says Sizzix on there. So you'll know exactly which direction to put your plate in. And they've put it in multiple places on the plate so you can switch your plates back and forth because that's the best way to keep them from warping quicker. All right, let's get into some die cutting. So I picked out this cardstock. This is some pretty thick pattern paper from Altenew in this alcohol inked background, if you're curious about it. It's the most beautiful paper ever. Not the point here, but right here I'm showing you up close. See that Sizzix? That means that's gonna be facing the machine in that direction and it's beveled. So you're not gonna get that it's gonna feed in really, really nicely is what I'm saying. So I'm gonna take this love die, I'm gonna take a happy die, and I'm going to cut them out. As this is running through, I'm actually gonna put in the real volume so you can hear the machine, and I'm gonna keep it in real time. The crackling is a normal part of the process. That just means it's cutting over your dies. And the birds are just an added special addition <laughs> to my craft room in the morning. <laughs> All right, so they cut them out perfectly. I wasn't expecting anything differently. Um, beautiful cuts, 
uh, just really easy. I mean, I was, yeah, okay, but this is all fine and dandy. What happens when you need to cut out an intricate die? This is the die I use for testing all kinds of things, different glitter card stocks, different machines. If you can pass this test, then you, my friend, are worth your weight in gold. So let's cut out this intricate die here. I ran it through the machine, and here's my honest, real reaction when I pulled it out. Oh, yes. Thank you. Thank you, physics. Never mind that I was snacking. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right, so there we go. It cut it out perfectly. I was so excited about that. All right. Let's move into some techniques. Now, it is an electric die cutting machine, but we can still do some of our favorite techniques. So I'm gonna show you two different ways to get partial die cutting. So let's say you wanna create sort of like a window on your project, or you want to cut something on the edge of your project without cutting it all the way through, you're gonna to wanna to do something called partial die cutting. So there's two ways that we can do this. I'm gonna lay down my material and my die, and I'm just gonna place my, my cutting plates exactly as they would if I was running it through the whole machine. Instead of letting it run through, I'm gonna get halfway through, and then I'm gonna hit the reverse button right here, and it's gonna pull it back out. It's a one-touch reverse button. So I'm gonna slow that down for you, and I'm gonna show you again. As it gets to the place where I think I need it, I'm going to hit that reverse button just one time. Don't hold it and let it go. And it will come out to get you your partial die cutting. I forgot to mention also, there is no go button on this. It's a manual feed and it's automatic. So as soon as you load in your stuff, it's going to catch it and start pushing it through. But you see, we get this partial die cutting and we have like a half circle. So that's the one way that you can do it. If you're not quite confident that you know when to hit that reverse button, although I would recommend just practicing and trying it, uh, then you can take your cutting plate here and you can place it at the halfway mark. And this way, everything that's on the double cutting plate side will get cut. So keep that in mind. Now, none of this is in the manual, so if you do any of these techniques, that is at your own risk. Um, I don't know I mean, I've never had an issue with it, but of course I have to say that, given that I'm on a public social platform, um, I you know, I just want you to know that you're, you're playing with your machine and you just wanna be careful with how what you're doing, okay? But again, I've never had any issues. So I am taking that off, and now you can see, because I had the double plate at the bottom, that is where my half circle is going to be. And so I have my partial die cutting. So you can still do that technique with this machine and quite easily. Let's look at the Biggs dies. Now, this is particularly one from Spellbinders. So what I love about this is it matches and fits multiple brands as well. So I have my Sizzix Biggs dies and I have my big one from Spellbinders. My Spellbinders one has uh, the alphabet. And so um, I'm showing you all of these things because I want you to know that they are compatible with so many things. Um, even the long dies, like the really, I forget what they're called, extra long pro probably, but even those will fit. So I'm gonna take uh, my cutting plate, I'm gonna take my big die, then I'm gonna take my cardstock, pl uh, placing it the correct way, uh, face down onto my die, and then my top cutting plate. And that's the sandwich that we're going to use when we're using our Biggs dies, because the Biggs is essentially the thickness of the main platform. And so we're going to be able to just replace that. Then I'm going to run this through my machine, and coming out the other end, we're going to have some amazingly beautiful alphabet dies. Now, these alphabet die cuts are um, really large and that's why I loved this die, this uh, die particularly because they're really big letters and they make some really fun projects particularly if you're a scrapbooker and I think I got this die at like 50% off so shocking I know <laughs> so I'm gonna pull off that that negative piece here and just the positive pieces are just falling out tons of alphabet so I ran this through twice and then I also used a very thick piece of white cardboard. It's the cardboard that kind of comes with um, some of your, like your backing to like a 12 by 12 sheet, paper sheet. 
um, it's that thick. And I'm going to show you that in just a little bit. We will, uh, we'll come back to that. So I get all my die cuts out and again, love this. Of course, I love the rainbow. I think that glitter card stuck. I'll try to find it for you if you're interested in it, but it's gorgeous. Here's the white card stock, uh, cardboard rather, very, very thick, and I'm probably going to use these letters as the base to give me some dimension because this card stock. But I wanted to run that through because, well, A, I had everything out, and B, I wanted to make sure to, I showed you how thick um, or how the thick of material that you can run through. Now, if you missed a video recently I did on hacks, this is one way that I keep my alphabet dies. I love, I have so many different types of alphabet dies, but I find it daunting when I'm sitting down to do a project and I have to re-pull them out and redo the letters. So as I go through my craft room and I do pull out a die set, I likely will run the entire thing through my die cutting machine and then just organize those and keep them. And so right now I'm just showing you in super speed that I am adding these huge alphabet die cuts to my alphabet storage. Those, you find any storage you can. Those particular ones are from scrapbook.com. They're meant for daubers, the large daubers, but I use them for this and I love them and they look nice and neat. And then I just put stickers on the very top of them to tell me what letters were in each of the little squares. So little side hack for you there. Let's go back to the machine. So next thing that we're going to have a look at is whether or not I can use my magic mat. Now my magic mat right here, this one is from scrapbook.com and it is meant to minimize warping on your die cutting plates by using the mat to cut your stuff out. So I, I'm going to show you the sandwich for this, Spoiler alert, yes, it works great. So I am um, gonna show you, and that will really elongate the life of your cutting plates because the cutting plates are not cheap and you can reuse your magic mat. Even if it gets warped, you can de-warp it by adding some heat to it and you'll get that back. So we have the platform, we have a cutting plate, we have the magic mat, and then we have another cutting plate. Okay, well, of course our materials and die. And then we have um, another cutting plate. So if you have two magic mats, I venture to say that you can use both of those instead of your die cutting. But I have two on the way and I'm going to show you that when they come in. All right, here's another little tip and trick. Now this cut out beautifully. Of course, I used my intricate die again. This is glitter cardstock, which is a little bit different fibers. So break the fibers up by bending all the way around and then your pieces are going to pop out. Now I show you this, I always pick the hardest die to demonstrate this with because it can be like, okay, if you can cut through this, you pretty much can cut through everything because there's so many swirlies in this die. I want to make sure that even the tiniest end of that swirl is getting cut out. And although I needed a tool for assistance, they were not stuck in there at all. They came out really well. So that was with using my magic mat. And there's some other die cuts I got done. I was having some fun. Now let's take a look at the footprint. So here's the footprint of the Sizzix Switch Machine. The one on the right is the Sizzix Big Shot Plus, and that is one I could use all my dies with the crank machine. Look at the difference between the sizes. I know that the length is the same, but the width is drastically different. Having that Big Shot Plus on my desk was not an option. It just, I couldn't make it work. But now I'm able to keep this on my desk. I can just literally like lift it forward, put it right on my glass mat, and then I can die cut when I need to and then lift it back. I don't have to take up as much space. It's still a large machine though, as I'm showing you here in this picture, because the back are my Gemini Juniors on the left and my Gemini Go is on the right. And so they do take up, it takes up quite a bit. But um, there it is in its new home, all snuggled in for the night and ready for usage when we get to it. Now this is the Tim Holtz black version. And I opted for this one because they go out of stock so quickly. And so it was either the black one or the white one that I particularly wanted. This one came in stock, super glad I got it. it looks great, looks sleek. Here is the uh, cherry blossom color, very soft pink color. And there's also a white version. Now scrapbook.com's pricing is the best I've seen around, but a viewer also shared with me that you can check out in-house stores, like stores you can visit, such as 
uh, Hobby Lobby or Michaels, like take a look around and see if you can find them there as well. If you did want to wait until this comes back in stock, I am always getting a little birdie to let me know when things are back <laughs> and I am happy to share that with you. I share it right away all over my social media. So on my YouTube, my Instagram, my Facebook. So if you're not already hanging out with me on those platforms, please join me there. I don't want you to miss anything. And then lastly, I wanted to just take a minute and share with you, why am I sharing this review when this machine is out of stock? <laughs> this was a conundrum I found myself in because I find it frustrating if I can't access something easily and I watch it and I like it. But here's the thing, I can't predict when this is going to be back in stock and how long it's going to be in for. And I don't want you to have to make a pressured last minute decision without getting the information that you need. So I'm hopeful that this video presents that to you so you can make a decision for yourself and your budget to say, yes, this is something I really want, or no, I can pass on it for now. But when you're under the time restraints of it being back in stock and then it going out of stock really quickly, that's just not really a best place to make a financial decision. So I'm hoping that you'll give me grace on that, that I know it's out of stock, however, now, it's at the time of filming, it's out of stock, but be sure if you're watching this in the future that you click the links below to see if it's back, okay? So I just wanted to put that disclaimer out there. That's all I have for you today. Let me know what you think about this machine. I am always looking to hear your thoughts and insights. I will see you all in those comments down below and in the next video. Bye-bye.